greetings. Today I'm going to talk about something that's frankly more advanced in terms of, of health. Green juicing is a very good idea. Carrots make it more palatable. You wouldn't think it, but they're sweet. A lot of glucose in that starch of the carrot. That's the big deal about carrot juice. It's not that it's any better than any other. It's just it tastes better. Some people say, oh, I don't like the taste. It's carroty. Yeah, given, given what the alternatives are, turnips and radishes and root vegetables. So carrots are a good way to go. The problem is that there's so much pulp. Even if you have a very, very good juicer and it's very dry pulp, there's still a lot of it. So here's my point. Let's say you have carrot juice and you want a lot of greens in it. Green juice is a little bit of a chore. It can be, it's much more of a meal than a treat. Very good nutrition, except the fiber. It always bothered me that you have to compost it because it's food, it's nutrition, but it just doesn't taste good. All that carrot pulp messes things up. It's just, so how to use that? How to use the pulp? And the answer is you can make fiber burgers, fiber burgers. This is what you do. You make your, your green juice and you either use carrots or you don't use carrots, but you do them separately. That is you say, do the carrot juice first. Then you empty out the fiber catcher. Just empty it out however you would into a bowl. And then you do the greens. And I mean a wide mix of greens, kales and kale and cabbage and turnips and beets and celery, whatever you want to get that nutrition into your bloodstream. And you collect that fiber, that pulp. Now you've got two different batches. I, I would just compost the carrot. I know somebody a long time ago who was going to be 50 and frugal and she made carrot cake out of the carrot pulp. And it, was, it wasn't it was really a cake. <laughs> it was uh, it's like a, a brick, same color then. It was uh, like a cake of soap in the sense that it was not tasty at all. Obviously you'd need to add some kind of sweetness again. So that wasn't a successful idea. It was a noble experiment, but not, so, not such a great outcome. Compost it. But the, all that other fiber, all that green fiber, it's not at all bulky. No matter what it is that you're, you're juicing, it's going to reduce down to a fair bit of liquid and not a lot of pulp at all. So what are you going to do with that fiber? Well, traditionally, you know, you throw it out or you add something. This is what I did. I got a dehydrator, well, I have one, and I mixed in the, with the fiber. It's all mixed together now in a big bowl. You can mix in some kind of soluble fiber, psyllium, powdered flax seeds, chia seeds. They get gooey, and that gooeyness is a, is a binder. So you mix in this prepared powder, and you make that a liquid, a paste, with apple cider vinegar. Then you knead it in to the pulp, to the fiber. So now you've got a paste, and it's going to be a bound together paste. It's a batter. Shape it into, I like small patties. Very small and very thin, almost chips. Then dehydrated. In about eight hours, 10 hours, you've got, you've got patties. And there's a little bit of flexibility in them, but they are spreadable. They're now it's gonna be something like a dip. I like mustard. So you get a good mustard. You have some kind of a prepared, fermented, or cultured seed dip. Hummus would do it. Tahini would do it. And now you've got a kind of a chip dip. You're getting all of that absolutely phenomenal nutrition. Now, it's not nutrition for you. It's nutrition for your probiotics. When you dehydrate it, you do it at a low temperature, 104 or 114, whatever it is. You want it to be below 120. Above 120, 115, 120, it can kill the probiotics. You don't want that. This is a probiotic delivery system. So you're putting the fiber into your system along with the probiotics. So it's effectively, if you had two or three pounds of vegetables and you juiced it, that's, you're getting all of that nutrition into your system. The, the number of grams, the traditional people, they will get 180, 200 grams on a daily basis into their diet. In contrast to this, city dwellers get hardly any at all, eight or 10 or 14. It's minuscule. 
And from that, the, the benefit of fiber is not just that it promotes regularity. The, that's just what you'd expect that. The benefit is that it feeds your probiotics. There are two massively important areas of nutrition that are deeply, deeply neglected. And it's fiber and it's enzymes. By dehydrating this fiber at a lower temperature, you're preserving both. This is super nutrition. This is absolutely major in terms of improving your daily nutritional content. It's not just the phytonutrients. That's important. That's what your body uses to repair itself. You get calories for energy. You get nutrients for repair and building. Fiber, as I have said, something is going to live inside of you. It's a, you've got a tube from mouth to the terminus and that tube is a warm, moist environment. Well, what, what, is, what about that? Yeah, something's going to grow there. I'm going to use a graphic example of women with yeast infections. Sorry, but it's a warm, moist environment. And if anything gets in, into that warm, moist environment that's got nutrition going on there, it's going to grow. So that's a problem for women. It's a problem for everyone in the sense that we have other tubes one of them is the colon, the large intestine. It's a warm, moist, nutritive environment. What's going to be growing there? And you've got a choice. It can be putrefactive bacteria because of all the undigested protein that ends up there. It can be yeast infections, infestations, or it can be something that's deeply benevolent. The, the word probiotic, that word pro, well, let's break it down. There's probiotic and there's antibiotic. Probiotic is not, the, not to be contrasted with antibiotic. Antibiotic is just, let's kill it all. So the proper counterpart of a pro yay biotic would be a dysbiotic, dysfunctional, a negative. It's a living thing that's bad for you. Those are the choices. The third choice is it's neutral. And there are plenty of bacteria that live on you, don't seem to do anything at all. They're placeholders. Your tongue ha it should be full of bacteria that doesn't seem to do anything. It just lives there. And it does have a function. It's keeping other things from growing there. It's taking up space. The, the old time, the hippies brought it back big time. Thrush. Thrush is a mouth fungus. And because they were too natural to need to brush their teeth, they, sp they spread that particular disease along with so many others. In those days, we call them VDs, venereal disease. Every half generation needs to change its euphemisms. The old ones weren't bad, but everybody needs to leave their mark. So as often as you make juice, and <laughs> it needs to be much more than it is, you make your juice, you're big, big, you go buy eight, 10 bucks worth of greens, you get a lot for that. You make your juice, you get all that fiber, separate out the carrot pulp, dehydrate it. You might get 10 or 15 little fiber patties, freeze them. You might get a quart or a half gallon of green juice, freeze it, put it into cups. How much are you going to use for that day? You use a couple of the fiber patties. You use a glass, however much of green juice, sip it. Take a while, savor it. It should take you as long to s finish that as it would take you to eat that many vegetables. And there's a lot of chewing with vegetables, raw vegetables, which is what you're getting. So sip it. And as you're doing that, enjoy the, the fiber patty because you've made it tasty. This is revolutionary. It's easy and it is absolutely superb nutrition. First, juice some stuff. Don't get all complicated. When you get the habit weekly of having two or three or four or five days in the week where you do have this green juice, you'll learn different recipes. When you have that habit, then you get a little more complicated and you can do the fiber. Once you're organized, it doesn't, it's not complicated because you've got a system. A little known problem about obesity is the probiotics. There are probiotics that will predispose you to obesity. If you change your probiotics, the, the germs that are living inside your body, the good germs that are there, if you change them into a healthy profile, you'll be very pleased. Is it guaranteed? Well, you've heard my joke about guarantees, but best practice. Best practice will give you best results. 
as I have said, may not be good results, but it will be the best that was possible. And who would turn down the best thing that could happen? All right. Have a great day.